React India. Hi everyone. Um, so, okay, I have the slide. Am I audible to the back? Okay, sure. So let me introduce myself. My name is Vishal, and currently I'm working as a software engineer at Tata One MG, where I'm focused on making the user experiences like how we can enhance the experience of user on our website uh, and improve it more and more, where we can convert the uh, visitors of our website into sales. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'll start with my talk. So we front-end devs work with loaders all the times, right? So in yesterday's talk, uh, my colleague Soro mentioned uh, we work with spinners, loaders, and uh, recently we started working with the uh, this skeletons, right? We are uh, implementing it everywhere, every, everywhere. But end users don't generally like uh, loaders, so they are like they want a fast uh, website with. Uh, less and less loading time where the navigation is snappy and uh, your next page is uh, ready whenever they navigate to the next page. But uh, the challenge is uh, we are uh, getting the data from a server. So it's not uh, like when we load the chunks or the JavaScript and CSS, which we want to show uh, to the user, it's not readily available. It's like not a native application. So we try to implement multiple uh, things to like enhance the, it. And at uh, one MG also we are focused on uh, enhancing this experience. So recently we implemented a technique uh, which we call uh, predictive prefetching to improve this uh, user experience more. Okay, so let me set a context around it. So yesterday, uh, let's recap uh, Saurabh's talk. So he mentioned something called uh, loaders be, uh, within loaders, right? So loaders within loaders are bad uh, because uh, they increase the duration, how we perceive the navigation, and also decrease the uh, fluency of our website. So that's bad. So uh, uh, this conversation actually happened during our engineering meet. So uh, this happened between two devs. So first one is uh, Mr. Ankur, and uh, second is Mr. Saurav. So Mr. Ankur said that we need to have a smaller JS bundles, right? Because we want to load our website as fast as we can, because uh, as the initial load, loading time, what matters. But then Mr. Saurav says that uh, I don't want to show loaders to user on each navigation. I, I want this experience to be as fast, and uh, it should be like native-like. And I want to eliminate those loaders. But like we cannot eliminate the uh, loaders completely, but we can uh, reduce the time uh, when we are showing the loaders to user or uh, let's say make the transition smooth. So how we did that? Uh, we uh, implemented multiple things, but uh, like we tried uh, three, four things, but we uh, stuck with a solution. Uh, so as you all know, AI is buzzword these days, right? Uh, so we also thought let's use AI to solve this problem. So how we did it? Uh, let's check. Uh, so we implemented, uh, so I mentioned a, a term, predictive prefetching. But before understanding what is predictive prefetching, let's first understand what prefetching is. So uh, let's say you have a website where you have uh, added a, a, a prefetching link, uh, like REL prefetch links. So what's going to happen when you visit a website, like uh, I'm loading this example.com, your website is going to load your uh, 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 JavaScript bundles will pass, your DOM element, uh, everything is going to render on the screen. And after that, a browser will determine what are the prefetch links on your uh, DOM elements, on your uh, DOM tree. And it's going to, uh, it's going to uh, download those resources in background. Uh, it's not going to happen on main thread. Uh, browser will automatically download those in uh, uh, like in background thread. Uh, and uh, one more thing, uh, browser automatically assigns those uh, network call as lowest priority. So they are not going to hamper your current user experience also. And after uh, when browser downloads those chunks, browser is going to keep them in uh, uh, browser cache or uh, storage. And uh, browser will keep it for five minutes. After that, uh, your uh, normal uh, cache policy, whatever you have on that resource will apply. 
and uh, when user navigates on that site, uh, you, uh, on that particular page for which we have prefetched the links, a browser uh, user will get the experience uh, like the pre-rendered page or the pre-loaded page because we have all the resources available to us. So uh, uh, using this technique, we uh, tried to enhance it more because there are some issues with uh, prefetching all the links, right? If you have a huge page where you have multiple links, it's not uh, good if we are downloading all the uh, chunks for next pages because from your current page, user is going to navigate to only one page. If you are, let's say, 10 links, user will navigate to one link only. So it's not good because a uh, user might be using a uh, limited data availability. Uh, there might be a uh, user might have a slow connection. So we wa what we want to do is we want to determine where is user going to go next. So that's where this predictive terms, uh, term comes in. So how predictive prefetching is going to work? So first, what we are going to do is we are going to capture or uh, gather the user navigation journey uh, where user is landing on our page and to which page user is going next. We are going to uh, uh, gather that and pass that to our AI and ML model. And we are training our model using that data so that AI model can uh, predict uh, uh, by, uh, by passing my current route or my navigation journey. Uh, AI model will predict you where, what's the next route where user might go. And what I'll do, I'll pass that link to my prefetching layer. And in turn, this prefetching layer is going to uh, basically get the resources for that route and going to append that in uh, my uh, DOM element, DOM tree, sorry. Uh, and at last, I will get the uh, website with the uh, instant navigation as uh, uh, my all the resources are prefetched. And uh, uh, as soon as I navigate to that page, my uh, page will start rendering. But like before uh, building the solution, we decided let's first check out if there's anything out there uh, in open source community which is already built. Uh, so. We found a library called guest.js. So guest.js is built by Google. It does this uh, same thing. It's also a predictive prefetching library. Uh, but uh, we found some issues with this library. So first one is it's not very well maintained. It's uh, like still in beta version and uh, last version published was around three years, uh, three years back, right? Yeah. And uh, the second issue uh, that we faced is uh, the model they are using only considers your current page and uh, your previous page uh, journey. So what we try to build is we want to uh, capture the entire user journey. So where user is landing from that point to uh, what pages user is navigating. We are capturing that whole journey and we are feeding our model that uh, all that data so that our predictions, uh, we can predict more correct result. Uh, after that, we explored all the uh, popular web frameworks like uh, uh, React frameworks, uh, Gatsby, Next.js, Remix. Uh, they are not doing predictive prefetching, They're like they don't have this capability, but they do a, a level of uh, prefetching where uh, they have some heuristics like uh, when you hover on a link or uh, uh, let's say a link appears in a view fold, they are going to prefetch resources for those links. but. Uh, it's not uh, easy for us to uh, use an entire like new framework because at 1MG we have an in-house uh, framework which is custom built for our needs. Uh, so with that, we decided to build our own solution. So before building, let's uh, first list out what are the like expectations from uh, this solution, what are the requirements. So first one is uh, like it should be able to prefetch routes. I mean, that's obvious, right? <laughs> uh, Okay, you can laugh. <laughs> and the second thing is, uh, which is the like main thing, it should take care of user resources. So I am I am emphasizing on this point. We are not going to exploit uh, users' data bandwidth. So like user uh, can have a limited data availability. So we are not going to exploit that. We need to take care of uh, uh, this part. And third one is, uh, we need to adapt to users' connection speed also. Uh, so let's say user is on slow connection speed. We don't want to prefetch at that point uh, because that means uh, we are taking up the network bandwidth and it might lead to a bad user experience for user, not on 1MG site, but entirely if user is browsing other websites also. 
एंड फोर्थ वन इज वी शुड बी प्रिफेचिंग बाई लाइकलीहुड स्कोर सो वट आई मीन बाई दैट इज अवर ए आई लेयर इज गोइंग टू प्रिडिक्ट राउट्स बेस्ड ऑन यूर करंट राउट सो दैट ए आई लेयर इज ऑल्सो प्रिडिक्टिंग अ स्कोर विच विच वी कॉल द लाइकलीहुड स्कोर विच माइट बी लाइक नाइंटी परसेंट एटी परसेंट सेवेंटी परसेंट सो वट वी वॉन्ट टू डू इज वी वॉन्ट टू प्रियोरिटाइज द रिसोर्सिस फॉर नाइंटी परसेंट राउट फर्स्ट आफ्टर लेट्स ए आई हैव प्रिफेस्ड ऑल द Uh, resources for my first route which have the uh, likelihood score of 90% then only i want to move to uh, move to the next route which have likelihood score of let's say 80% uh, fifth is uh, our ai model should be able to predict the routes accurately like if the model is not able to predict the uh, accurate routes it's uh, predicting incorrect routes and your user is not going to those route i mean that's not uh, good right i mean Uh, it it means we are downloading resources for some other routes and user is not even using those and the sixth one is uh, which is like main point it should not at any point of time block our main thread it, uh, everything should happen in background because if we are blocking the main thread that means we are hampering the uh, user experience of current page and if we are uh, hampering the experience of current page there's no point of like improving uh, experience of next page so with all these requirements in mind we started building the solution so we divided our solution into three parts so first part is slow boy uh, so slow boy has name slow in uh, its key, uh, this word slow in its name but uh, i assure you it's quite it's quite fast uh, so this slow boy is our in house uh, ai layer it uh, comprise of three parts basically so first one is client agent second is uh, server agent and our uh, third one is ai layer so client agent is basically the javascript which is running on user system uh, like in the browser so uh, client agent basically what it does it it captures the user navigation journey and pass it to the server agent so we are using the open telemetry uh, which is like uh, standard for uh, capturing the events and a uh, user journey uh, and then we are passing it to server agent which in turn uh, in, at the server agent we clean this uh, data and store it in db for the uh, training as a uh, training data set and after that we are passing it down to our ai model like uh, in uh, every 30 day we uh, train our ai model with this new data uh, to make it like more uh, accurate with the latest uh, data sets that we have and uh, then a client agent also have a uh, another responsibility which is to fetch the predicted uh, routes so uh, uh, when i am on uh, let's say page a the uh, client agent is also going to uh, fetch the results like the route predictions for next pages uh, it will be uh, fetching that from server agent which is like a api that we have exposed which in turn uh, goes to the ai layer to fetch those, that data and a uh, second part of uh, this solution is prefetch core which is a wrapper that we have built around uh, browsers inbuilt prefetch link so we have that link tag right with rel prefetch so we built our uh, wrapper uh, around that link so the uh, this prefetch core what it does it it accept the resource url which ai layer is generating and then we pass those to our prefetch core module Uh, which in turn uh, have some intelligence built in like uh, if i should prefetch that link or not so uh, we have some criteria right like uh, what is the user's effective connection type uh, what's the battery percentage of or if user is on power saving mode or if user is on data saving mode and if uh, we get a yes from this uh, uh, intelligence uh, we add that link into the dom element so by default we add into uh, it into header tag Uh, head tag but uh, uh, you can change it like it's all configurable you can pass a container also to it uh, like uh, where you want to insert this particular link tag and the best part about this solution is it's written in vanilla js so like it's easily uh, uh, you can easily integrate it in uh, any uh, framework of your choice it's not built for react only you can uh, even use it with uh, vanilla js 
so at 1MG, we have uh, our front-end tech stack uh, with React. So we, what we did, we built uh, uh, some hooks around uh, this prefetch core. So the first hook we built is a uh, use resource loader. It's a fairly simple hook. It takes a URL, uh, your uh, resource path URL, and some options. And uh, you can pass an array of URLs also if you want to uh, insert multiple links into uh, your uh, head tag, like you, you want to prefetch multiple resources, uh, you can pass uh, that to this uh, use resource loader hook, and it will uh, do all that intelligence work. It will check the connection type and all those things, all the criteria that we discussed in uh, previous slide. And after, uh, if like uh, we can uh, insert the link, it will insert it into a DOM uh, DOM tree. Second hook is use prefetch route. So it's uh, uh, similar to use resource loader, but it does not accept the resource path. It accepts the route that is generated from the AI layer. Because uh, according to your chunking strategy, you can have multiple uh, resources for your route. You can have a page conta uh, a container chunk. You can have widget chunk. Uh, so you can pass multiple uh, chunks to your uh, prefetch core that you want to uh, uh, prefetch for the next page. So what this hook does is it uh, it accepts some mapping also, your uh, route to chunk mapping. So we'll discuss in uh, next slide how we are generating that. And it, uh, it consumes that uh, mapping to get the chunk path against the route path that we are passing to this layer. So uh, the next one is uh, the Webpack plugin. So this uh, plugin we uh, wrote um, in uh, like for the consumption, uh, uh, how we are going to uh, basically map the route to chunk. So what we did is we are, uh, during the build time, we are consuming our route file uh, using our abstract syntax tree. Uh, basically, what uh, it uh, compiles your uh, route.js file it into abstract syntax tree and uh, uh, using that it generates some mapping between uh, what the ch uh, actual chunk which is webpack generating for the js file and the route that we uh, we are passing to it so let's say we have a home page for home page we can have multiple chunks it will list down all those chunks so this is how the json mappings uh, json mapping looks like so it has the this path a variable it can it uh, uh, we can pass a, a static route or a dynamic route uh, to this uh, path variable and uh, the other we have this uh, chunks and children mapping so chunks are your main page chunk which are like uh, depend uh, which you need for rendering the page and then you have children also which uh, you don't need to render the starting of your page but might need uh, when users scroll down or do some action uh, so uh, now let's see how all these uh, like three uh, layers working together. So first one is uh, slow by, uh, which is like we have a slow by client, which is analyzing user journey, slow by server, which is consuming the data and storing it in DB, and then AI model, uh, uh, which we are training to predict the next route. And then we are uh, passing those predicted route to uh, prefetch core. Uh, prefetch core basically uh, accept the routes uh, uh, as we saw and uh, it's consuming the JSON mapping also uh, uh, or the mapping that we saw earlier uh, with the uh, route to chunk mapping it uh, uh, accept that mapping and find out for the route what's the chunk that we are going to prefetch and uh, it uh, uh, adds that link tag into uh, the uh, HTML doc and as user browse our website, we keep uh, uh, prefetching uh, the chunks for uh, next pages, whatever our AI uh, model is pre uh, predicting. And uh, we try to give user a, a smooth and easy uh, navigation uh, experience. So we did all this. Uh, uh, the solution we built an AI model, we built a core, we built a plugin, and uh, like uh, we tried to improve the experience. But let's see the numbers if uh, uh, it, it all like it, it is is it worth doing all this? Uh, so uh, we were able to achieve nearly a 50% faster navigation 
when user uh, is now navigating on uh, our website so uh, we uh, measured it and on uh, popular pages uh, like uh, where user are uh, navigating most so 90% of our uh, users from home page go to search suggestion page and uh, from our lab page go to uh, lab search page so as you can see in the graph also uh, we have uh, uh, in the red bar there's the uh, navigation time before uh, without prefetching and the green bar is uh, with prefetching so we have uh, uh, reduced the time to uh, almost half so before like it was 2000 milliseconds for labs and now it's like uh, 900 uh, milliseconds but we uh, okay sorry yeah, but like this data is for nerds, and uh, as Saurav also mentioned yesterday, we are uh, focusing on uh, focusing on perceived performance. So let's see uh, how it how it is looking for uh, end user when user is browsing uh, our website. So I'll play this video. So this is how the uh, the experience is for, uh, now for the user. Uh, Thank you. So one thing I want to mention here is you can see we have loader in the both the uh, videos, right? But in the first one, uh, if I emphasize more. So in the first one, you can see we have the full screen loader. Then we have uh, other data loader, right? So the second loader is for uh, API calls that we are making on that page. So in the after you you are not seeing that fallback loader for with the full screen because we have that chunk already in. Uh, our browser cache. That's why uh, browse, uh, our app was able to consume that from the browser cache only. And also this uh, video I have recorded with the fast 3G throttling and uh, 6x CPU slowdown. But uh, the another part uh, that uh, I uh, emphasized on was data consumption. So we did an activity. Um, we prefetched all the links of our uh, one MG homepage, and uh, we were consuming around 214 KB. And for the first fold, we were consuming around uh, 116 KB. But with the predictive prefetching, we are just consuming 12 KB, which is like 6% of the original. So we are taking care of users' uh, data bandwidth here also. Okay, so we have built uh, all this, uh, but what's next? So we are not going to stop here. Um, so I think Mr. Ankur and Mr. Saurav are uh, happy now. You can ask him, he's sitting here, if Saurav is happy. <laughs> okay, uh, but like I said, we are not going to stop here. So our next milestone is we want to open source this uh, library as a NPM package. So right now we are working on this uh, solution and we are going to open source this soon. And second is we are going to train our AI model more to get like more accurate result. Uh, we are uh, basically trying to improve the uh, uh, events or the, uh, you can say, the journey that we are, uh, data we are consuming from the uh, user's device. We are trying to enhance that more and more so that we get more accurate results. And uh, right now, we are only fetching the uh, uh, chunks of next pages, but uh, we, are also, we, we are also focusing on uh, fetching the data also because as uh, uh, we have a pipeline where we first uh, get the page chunk and then we make API calls and after that we uh, download the uh, widgets, widget chunk. So we want to enhance that pipeline more so that we can uh, we can eliminate that uh, data. Uh, so let me just go back. So we el want to eliminate this data loader also. So we are focusing on this part uh, right now, where, how we can uh, prefetch uh, the data for a particular page, but uh, we cannot do it for all the journeys. So uh, like we, if we are on category page or if we are on product uh, listing page, we cannot prefetch data for all the products. But for some of the journey, let's say if I am on cart page, uh, I can prefetch the order summary page uh, before I can even prefetch the data for order summary page if we are talking about like e-commerce uh, card journeys. Uh, so we are trying to uh, achieve that. And uh, last, we are also building one intersection observer layer. Uh, so this is based on, uh, like inspired from Gatsby's uh, uh, using this, AI, uh, this uh, intersection observer layer. 
so yeah uh, that's all that's what we have built um, so next i would like to thank my uh, 1mg router team uh, so these are the guys uh, and folks who built all the things and the solution and yeah thank you thank you all thank you everyone for listening to me